solving shit at the pilot. it on. Niggas be broke and be solving, but still talking shit like they violent. Niggas is broke. Look, as much as we want to say defense wins championships, at the end of the day, you have to put the ball in the basket. The objective of the game is to score more points, and this video is dedicated to the top five scoring performances in NBA history by a single player. Now, if you are expecting me to just go in order in the single game scoring records, you are happily wrong. I will be factoring in the significance of the game, the time period, and other circumstances that made the game special. But before we start, I want to give some honorable mentions that didn't make the cut. And here are my honorable mentions, and they go to Jordan's 69 points, David Robinson 71, and Elgin Baylor 61 in the playoffs. But with that being said, let's start with number 5. Number 5, Clay Thompson 60 points. Yes, I am already considering Clay Thompson's 60 point game a top 5 scoring performance of all time. I mean, the man scored 60 points in 29 minutes. That's literally just two and a half quarters, and he scored 60 points. Now let's add the fact that he was probably on pace to break the three-point record as well. It's just a shame that we didn't see Clay play in the fourth quarter. One thing that people don't get is Clay Thompson was actually on pace for a 100-point game. He essentially had the same permanent average as Wilt did in his 100-point game, but he didn't play in the fourth quarter, obviously, so he didn't get it. Now. If you look at the box score, that's basically me saying that he'd score 40 points in the last quarter. Now that might be pushing it assuming that he'd score 40 in one quarter, but hey, who scored 37 in one quarter? This guy, right? So why not? If there was one guy today that could score 40 in a quarter, it would be Klay Thompson. But just scoring 60 in three quarters is already ridiculous enough. Number 4. Kobe 62 points in three quarters. Just like Klay Thompson on December 20, 2006, Kobe the Black Mamba Bryant scored 62 points in three quarters, like Klay Thompson plus two. The reason I have this game above Klay is because of two reasons. One, he scored more than Klay, and two, he outscored the whole Mavs team in three quarters. Yes. By the end of the third quarter, Kobe Bryant had 62 points and the Dallas Mavericks had 61. And can I just add that this was against the seventh best defense of that season? Kobe that game was on pace of about 1.9 points per game. Let's say he played 10 minutes of the fourth on that pace. Kobe would have scored um, 81 points. So, uh, I mean, I guess that game was inevitable for Kobe. Number three. Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game. Yes, I have Wilt Chamberlain's 100 only at number 3. There are a couple of reasons why Wilt's 100 is overrated. Number 1 is the time period. Stats back then were so inflated due to the fact that the competition was not as high as it is right now. Now don't get me wrong, salute to those players like Wilt for being pioneers of the game, but it's just the fact that scoring 40 back then would be like scoring 25 today. It was just so common. Also, there are a couple of rules that I do not see people ever talking about that this article I found on Bleacher Report talks about. One is the three seconds in the paint rule. When you're as physically dominant as Will Chamberlain combined with the competition, he probably just camped down in the post and laid it in every time, just for the fact that he could. Also, there was another rule that extremely handicapped Will Chamberlain. One is the fact that non-shooting fouls rewarded the offense with one free throw. And two is the rule that after the opposing team gets their sixth team foul, the fouled player gets three free throws to make two, and then another pair on top of that to make one more. You literally have five free throw attempts to make three points just for the other team being over the foul limit. These three rules was a big part in how Wilt got 32 free throw attempts and it was just his lucky day since he made 28 of them when he's been a notoriously bad free throw shooter throughout his career. And also look at this quote by the Knicks guard Richie Garrett. 
That game was not played as it should have been played. The second half was a travesty. I don't care what Philly people say, I'm convinced that during the half, they decided to get Wilt 100. He took nearly every shot. In the normal flow, Wilt would have scored 80-85 points, which is mind-boggling when you think about it. I'm sorry, this may be basketball history, but I always felt very bad about that game. I got so sick of it that I intentionally fouled out. That game was not a natural 100-point game. It was a game planned 100 point game that was forced by the coaches combined with the rules in the time period. I, you know, just for these reasons alone, I can't rate it as high as people say it is. But at the end of the day, Wilt Chamberlain is the only one to score triple digits in an NBA game, so I'll still put him at number 3. Number 2, Michael Jordan 63 points in the garden. Michael Jordan 63 to me is hands down the greatest scoring performance against an elite team. From the guys I mentioned before, you look at the teams that they faced, it looks like you should drop 40, 60 plus is just icing on the cake. But for Michael Jordan to score 63 points on the 1986 Boston Celtics is actually ridiculous to think about. Okay, let's think about it then. The Bulls were the 8th seed going into that game against the 67 win Boston Celtics team that would go on to win the championship that year. With 4 Hall of Famers in their prime in Dennis Johnson, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, and Larry Bird. And then the 6th man of the year and a Hall of Famer himself that was just extremely slowed down due to injuries in Bill Walton. So that's basically 5 Hall of Famers on one team. Let's add the fact that this Celtics team was essentially the best defensive team in the league, only allowing .3 points less than the number one team. Let's not even think about the 63 because in game one he dropped 49 against them and then he went for 63 in game two. That's a combined 112 points in two games. But just looking at the 63 point game alone, that is crazy. The only thing that's holding it back from number one is the fact that one, the game went to double OT, and the fact that Jordan didn't win the series or the game. Again, not saying it's his fault at all. At the end of the day, he was the number 8 seed going up against an all-time great number 1 seed. But if it didn't go to double OT and the Bulls won, there would be no doubt in my mind that this would be the best scoring performance of all time. But there is only one performance that tops MJ, and that performance is by a guy named Kobe Jelly Bean Bryant. Number 1, Kobe Bryant's 81 point game. Now after what I just said about MJ63, how could anything top that? Yes I know this game was against the Raptors, one of the worst defense of that time, but come on man. 81 points in regulation without all the rules that Will had, without all the help that Clay had, and the fact that he played the whole game? Okay, the real thing that pushes Kobe's 81 to the top for me is the fact that like Jordan 63, the Lakers needed Kobe's 81 to win that game. If you look back at that game at one point, the Lakers were down by 25 plus points I believe. Kobe Bryant single-handedly brought that team back and won the game on his own willpower. Now you might say that yes, but it was against a bad defensive team though. I'm sorry, but the Raptors were double, triple teaming this guy, and they couldn't do anything to stop Kobe Bryant. He is not the 7'3 beast that is Wilt Chamberlain. He is a 6'6 guard. He was simply unstoppable. And let's add the fact that in the first half alone, he only scored 26, quote-unquote only, but then in the second half, 55 points in one half. That's ridiculous. It was a once in a lifetime performance and I don't see the record being broken by any time soon with how the rules are set up right now. But that closes out this video. As much as we criticize these players, it is amazing what these guys have done, what they will do, and what they are doing today. Like these guys make a 30 point game look like garbage man. But with that being said man, I hope you guys like this video and I am out. Peace.